there are any difference with that? Yeah, okay. So the, the last question is more a computer science uh, issue. Uh, we have a lot of data. We want to organize the way we are treating them. So a good point will be the design of a data pipeline. So I guess the microphone is working now. <laughs> So this presentation will be uh, done in four parts. Uh, the fourth part will depend on the internet connection, so I cross the, my fingers. Um, the first part will be uh, the detail of the, uh, the data we use, so which data, which formats, which, which kind of information. Then I will talk about the classification, so basically uh, by using Kamin algorithm. And in the third part, uh, just before the web application demonstration, uh, I will talk about the availability prediction part. So I, I'm, I know that I have, let's say, 10 bikes at a dedicated st station now, but what will be the amount of bikes in 30 minutes? So to talk about the data, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, uh, we focused on two cities, two French cities, which are Lyon and Bordeaux. So both cities are, uh, have some uh, open data portals. Uh, for Lyon, it's Data Grand Lyon. For Bordeaux, it's Open Data uh, Bordeaux. But you can find any, uh, this kind of portal in, in any country. So there are such uh, portal in, uh, in the UK, in the US, in Germany, and so on. So the data we are, uh, we are dealing with uh, are basically uh, these data. So we have, okay, we have a column of IDs, so that's, that represents bike stations. We have the amount of bikes that we can store at each station. We have, at this timestamp, these time stamps, we have the available, available bikes and the available bike stands. And we have an information, an extra information uh, on, of the, on the status of the station. So if a station is closed, that means that we can't drop uh, a bike and we can't uh, take a bike. Uh, so the point is this kind of data uh, is gener generally not standardized. Uh, you can have a, a first open data portal with, which will uh, present the data in this, uh, this way, but a second open data portal that will uh, have another uh, organization. So that's a first challenge. We, can, we have to design a pipeline that is able to uh, understand all the type of, uh, of uh, data, and that's a clear um, issue. Uh, we, we can generalize the, 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 the work uh, on the first uh, approximation. But uh, the, the, um, there is a solution. Uh, so there is a, a GitHub uh, reposit repository that uh, deals with a standardization uh, format, a standardized format to present this uh, information. So. If, we, if you have some data, you manage an open data portal, you, have, you can uh, organize your data in this way. So you have a bunch of JSON formats, of JSON files, sorry, and the, the most important ones are, uh, so for example, this one, station information. I'm pretty sure that you can't read it, but I will be as clear as possible. So station information that JSON, will contain all the station in a dedicated format, and we, ca we will be able to compare the station uh, in from different cities. Then we have the station status that JSON will, that will contain uh, the number of available bikes at a dedicated moment. And so that's for the shared bike services, but you have the same, the same file, which is free bike status that JSON, that will deal with free floating services. So that, that's a way to standardize the information and you have a, a lot of additional file that uh, deals with metadata. So this, uh, this track will help uh, the urban planner and the, the open data portal manager to really uh, organize the, their data in the best way to, to improve the community. So 
what will we do with the data, uh, standardized or not? Uh, we have, uh, actually, we have s uh, different sources of data. We can get, uh, for example, uh, shapefile uh, stations. So we, we have to download the shapefile, we have to store it in base. Uh, in another way, we have some JSON files that are related to the availability, each five minutes, for example. And we have to deal with this uh, file formats and to aggregate the data into a single, a single, sources, a single source. Uh, and this single source will be a PostGIS database. So PostGIS because we have georeferenced uh, data, georeferenced stations. So for this input data, we are on the pipeline downstream uh, and we will just build all the, the pipeline by adding some feature engineering process and uh, machine learning treatments. So when, I talk, when I'm talking about uh, classification, station classification, when I'm talking about uh, prediction of bike availability, that's typically uh, where uh, machine learning is. And um, this, this schema uh, is, uh, could be completed because we, we, are, um, we do as well some visualization through the construction of data uh, of uh, web applications and web API. So the first uh, machine learning treatment that I will um, develop is the classification of stations. So what we want to do there? Uh, we have a lot of individuals in uh, a statistical way, so our individuals are bike uh, availability time series. We have as many time series as we have stations. And the point is to group the similar stations by the way of their time series. So for example, in the little schema, we have a, a green time series, we have a blue time series, we have a yellow time series. And the point is that we want to know if they can be grouped, uh, we can group them. Uh, of course, the green one doesn't look at uh, the blue one, so they will be probably in different clusters. We began this job, uh, this work, uh, after reading a very interesting paper, a uh, very interesting blog post, actually, uh, written by a guy from Dublin in Ireland, who did the, the th same thing. Uh, so uh, his name is James Lolo. Uh, and we, we tried to do the same thing in Lyon, and we have some very uh, interesting results that encourage us to, to continue. Uh, the, the point is that we have a blue cluster that represents stations where a lot of bikes are available on, uh, during the day. So maybe we, have, uh, we can consider that uh, they, this is, the, um, this is uh, for stations uh, close to working places. Uh, at the opposite, we have a, the red cluster, which deals with stations where a lot of bikes are uh, available on the night, so maybe close to the living places. And we have other uh, clusters, so the, the third inter interesting one is the uh, purple one, because we have a lot of bikes available during the evening, so maybe we are close to the, the bar and restaurant places, uh, so places where people go, uh, are going out and, uh, and so on. So these four uh, clusters actually are the outputs of the classification procedure and we can uh, just uh, put any station and um, sort them into uh, one of these four uh, profiles. What can be the result on a map? So for Lyon, uh, we have the, um, the uh, living places in red. Uh, actually, that's, uh, that's clearly the case. Uh, so I will ask you to trust me uh, there. Uh, the red part is merely uh, occupied by uh, flats and apartments, so living places. Then we have the blue uh, cluster, the um, walking places, uh, so close to the train station with a lot of, uh, of firms uh, and, uh, and so on. We have some blue point there because it's the, the university. So maybe the students take bikes to, to go to, to the university. And another uh, interesting point is this one. We have a lot of blue point there. 
so this place is the hospital of Lyon. So a lot of people uh, that who, uh, that um, that work at the hospital, of course, and there are a lot of universities dedicated to to health uh, topics. And the last, uh, the most interesting one, uh, the purple one, the, the place where people uh, are going out. So it's the city center, and just uh, my. Uh, my favorite uh, uh, anecdote uh, is that Oslandia is located there. So, <laughs> so that's it for the clustering. Uh, now the bike availability prediction. The, the information we have is that we know, uh, so we, ha we know the day of the week, we know the hour of the day, and we know how many bikes we have in any station at this moment. So we want to know uh, how many bikes there will be in 30 minutes or in one hour. And we will do supervi supervised learning to, to learn this, uh, the probability of having a bike in uh, one hour, let's say. So we use a method that is called XGBoost. I won't enter into the, the statistical details, but the, the main information that I can see is that it's uh, a boosting tree method. So we just build a tree and uh, take decision uh, regarding the, the x variables, so the variables that we have. Uh, uh, and we want to pr predict one single variable, which is y, the availability probability at the next hour. So again, a, s a bunch of results. We just run a single uh, a single uh, output there. Uh, so in Lyon, still uh, we have the prediction uh, on the top left, the ground truth on the top bottom, and uh, the root mean score error uh, on the on the right. And we can see that the without entering into the the figure de details, uh, all the station uh, have a low error. Uh, except two or three stations there. So this place, uh, it's interesting uh, to notice that the algorithm can't predict uh, availability because we have some, uh, some hills there. So people not necessarily use bikes to, to climb up the, the hill and uh, maybe there can be some uh, uh, refurniture procedure by the, the bike sharing uh, system organizer. So uh, let's uh, let's try let's take some risks. Uh, I have a small demonstration to show you the um, the web application that we develop at this occasion. Uh, so that's a, a web application uh, built with Flask, uh, a Python uh, Python library. So we have a small API that will allow us to to request the data. So we just have this data on uh, on a server uh, at Oslandia, and we just let the chance to, uh, to try it out. Okay. No. So, for example, I want to know the city that we have in base, and in base we have Lyon and Bordeaux. So that's a short example. Um, I will just show you some figures that can be really uh, use it really nice. So I'm going to Lyon, for example. I have a map with all my stations. Uh, I have a table of stations with some information. I have a chart that deal with the number of transactions. So, and uh, that's the moment to point out uh, little bugs because we have a zero station. That's clearly not normal. Um, so on the map, we can just see the current availability. We can see the prediction of the algorithm. Uh, and we can try to go to the uh, a station page and consider the station page, the, the information related to the station, and some additional graphs. So the, the profile, we can see that we are in the city center. So it's a station where a lot of bikes are there on the evening on a typical day. Uh, we have the, the daily uh, frequency, the prediction, the time series, and another bug for the end. Uh, you can see that our prediction uh, graph is uh, messing up something. But anyway, this is an ongoing work, and uh, we will try to, 
to fix that. Uh, but if we are, uh, you are interested in that, uh, contributions are welcome uh, for maybe fixing the, the graph if you are a JavaScript, uh, JavaScript uh, uh, master. Uh, or if you want to add some new CD, uh, for example, uh, that's possible. So, in conclusion, uh, we addressed some simple results questions uh, with OpenGL special datasets. We were uh, able to take some open data and to render it uh, by standardize, uh, standardizing it uh, with our homemade pipeline. Uh, so our API and our web application uh, is available, so I didn't uh, mention the, the address. Uh, so if you, if you want to go there, uh, data.oslandia.io slash bikes. Uh, and uh, we have some other interesting questions to, to deal with, but that will be uh, for the future. So if you want to contact us, it's possible. Uh, you can go to the GitHub repository, and I will be pleased to answer your questions. Five minutes for your questions. Yeah. Uh, I have a question regarding the data. Um, so you mentioned you have timestamp data regarding how many uh, spaces are available, how many uh, uh, spaces are generally available. Do you have origin and source data as well? So if a bike gets picked up uh, from somewhere where it goes, and plus, uh, mm -hmm. do you have, you probably have redistribution of bikes from the city in Lyon and in Bordeaux as well. How, if that exists, how do you factor that in? So that people come with a van and then yeah. redistribute bikes, which can skew your t statistics, obviously? So the first question was uh, to, to consider uh, individual bike and to follow bikes through time and through stations. So these data uh, are not available uh, in these examples. So maybe we can uh, imagine, imagine to, to going further uh, by consider city that uh, propose this kind of data. And your second question is really interesting because that's not the first time that we have this question. Uh, so, when, uh, what to do when there is a van that takes a lot of bikes and move, uh, move them f to another station? So that's clearly uh, an, artificial, uh, an artificial move. Uh, for the prediction algorithm, algorithm, to be honest, we don't take this into account. And this uh, is a clear uh, source of error. Uh, for the the algorithm, and that's probably what happened uh, in the hill, uh, so where we have the, our errors. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? So, so what was the, the main goal of uh, this work? Was it to? Uh, so what was the, the main goal of this work? Was it more uh, to have like an overview of the system and uh, for a kind of maintenance point of view? Or was it uh, to actually predict and plan ahead uh, works or uh, changes to the system? Okay, so the main goal of this work, uh, at the beginning, uh, it's a, a sandbox project. Uh, just to try some stuff, to tr try to apply some machine learning algorithm to, uh, to nice data. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we used that, uh, we applied that kind of treatment in other projects. Uh, but this project is uh, at the beginning an R&D effort. Uh, so this project uh, itself is not, it is not solved. Uh, so clearly, uh, we just um, improve our skills on uh, on uh, uh, geospatial data treatments uh, and apply it to other projects. It's a kind of a, a shelf. Uh. Question? Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm just curious about how much time it tends to take to actually do the machine learning for the new predictions and um, how much, where are you kind of like hosting it or how it costs for that? So the question was how many time the prediction, uh, the training process takes? Actually, it's, it's, um, it's kind of fast uh, because we 
not necessarily use a lot of data. Uh, we, in our first tries, uh, trials, we use like two months of data. Uh, it could have been better to, to use a, a kind of online learning process to just consider uh, freshest data uh, as long as they arrive on our system. Um, but we are not, uh, it, it's not like a deep learning algorithm that are re really, really long to, to, to train. Uh, XGBoost is yeah, nice in this point of view. And I don't know if your question will have a second part. Uh, that's okay. Okay, thank you, Raphael. Thank you.